Okay guys, here's the lowdown. Episode two of Interview with Monster Girls has demonstrated the importance of this episode. And it's dealing with an important monster girl, which everybody has a thing for, a Darula Hunt. Now I'm sure that everybody knows what a Darula Hunt is or have seen one in every anime. For instance, you've seen Celty from the Ra Ra, you know? And you've seen everybody's favorite girl, Monster Girl, Lala from Everyday Life with Monster Girls. But in episode two of Interview with Monster Girls, it teaches us an important lesson about a Darula Hunt. Like, how does a Darula Hunt eat? How does it use the bathroom? Or what does it do when it has personal feeling? This and that. That's what this episode was. And for those who are a fan of a Darula Hunt, I recommend that in this episode, in this review, I take a, I, I recommend you take a dramatic notes. Like, literally, dramatic notes in your notebook or binder. You just write down whatever and get it started on with business. So, let's get started. Well, here's the thing about episode two. Episode two introduces a girl named Machi. And Machi, as always, a Darul Han. And taking notes on this anime that I've learned, Darul Hans are an Irish demi whose legend is rooted in fairies. We get that, where the head is separated from the body. But the thing about that is, that episode, it kind of felt like we know about the real Hans more, even more and more as we speak. Machi, on the other hand, she wants to experience it going on a date with Sensei. Now you think there's some, you think that episode two is gonna have some, I don't know, a cliche of a teacher student kind of relationship anime thing. We see a lot in cliches in a lot of anime, but in this, this was important. So what else we know about it? Oh, how about this? Touch it when you, okay, now I meant to, meant to take a little notes on this, but when it's separated from the head, you see the flames, like the, the, the flames on it. And it, it questioned my existence, like picture this. What happens if Celty from the Raw Raw manage like if the head is separated from Celty's head I mean Celty's body and you literally touch that black little aura that she has does she react to does it grab us does, does, does that kind of fit you see what I'm saying but in this when you touch the flames it gets the nerves you know the chills down her spine and the thing about this is that I've learned so much about Duran that I'm pretty sure everybody has a thing for Celty now I know why when everybody watched Durara Everybody has a thing for Celty instead of Henri or any other girls from the show. And it makes me wonder just how why everybody from the fans of Monster Misune, you know, in everyday life with Monster Girls, has a thing for Lala instead of Mia, Sue, Pappy, Centaur, Arachne, Amira, or any girl from the Mom Squad. What can I say? But Machi, after Darula Han, her appointment was a hug, you know? You know, having a, somebody to hug a head. It's it's pretty nice, and the thing about her is that it's so powerless to her because it's like no one don't want to hug or touch a head. Think about it, guys. Think about it. Told you guys how weird is it to touch a head? That's what I'm saying. I just see that's one thing. So how weird is it to touch a head? See, there are things in this episode. In episode two that I've learned so much. That's what about that's why I study just by taking notes about it because it teaches you an important lesson when it comes to dating different natural monster girls in life. So if you guys have a thing with Dorilla Hans, I recommend taking notes on this as well. So we all know that. Now here's the story. Now Machi wants to go on a date with Sensei to experience it. What would it be like the date was just ahead? And then Hikari-chan, you know, the little little crazy energetic vampire decides, oh, I'll take the leap of body here, and you just, and the professor just takes the head. Now, just think about how weird that is to have a body in your house, just a random body, and just mimic on stuff. But the thing about that is that I've learned that if you leave the body here while the head, while the head is out there, the body reacts. And it, and it's kind of clear, and it kind of, they, they link because if the if the body I mean if the head is not there the body just writes something take notes and it works really well it they link and does and we learn about eating with a gorilla on and feeding it but here's the story here's the thing I don't get if you eat with a gorilla on and you feed it with just the head and you carry it and feed it and drinking it where does it go like 
you know there's no neck. So where does that food go? Does it like dissolves and airborne into the into the separate body? How does that phys how does that work? Like, how? You see what I'm saying? How does that work? I, I can't even I'm, I'm I'm still I'm still trying to figure that out. Like how does that work, guys? It's just if y'all fans of this show, like uh read the manga like myself, I'm still questioning that logic. But it's Monster Girls. Who am I to say? And again, by learning so much about the Rolan, it teaches us the importance that Monster Girls are different from humans, but it teaches us the value that we all equal. You know, we're all equal. Monster Girls, like Vampire, Drulahan, Succubus, it doesn't matter. They're humans just like us. And we could take any type of Monster Girls we like. So if you have a Monster Girl who's a Drulahan or a Vampire or a Snow Woman, Rest assure you, that's fine with me and the rest of you guys. But overall, episode two was really great. I enjoyed it. It teaches more about the Rural Hunt even more. And I'm sure you all, the Rural Hunt fans, really should really enjoy this episode as much as I do. So next week, episode three is going to introduce a succubus. Now, if you guys don't know what a succubus is, I recommend watching Zoya Vampire. But a succubus is the teacher. I'm going to call her Succubus Sensei. <laughs> but she's the teacher with the tracksuit and just wear glasses. The nerdy stuff. Math teacher. Sorry to disrespect those nerdy math teachers. But, but she's a Succubus. So I'm sure everybody has a thing for Succubus like Mizu Ray. I mean, uh, wrong girl. Uh, Kum from Rosalia Vampire. Wrong girl, dog. Shoot. But that's it. So, but again, episode two was really great. I enjoy more information as I'm taking notes down, learning about the rule, huh? Even though Drulon's are not my favorite Monster Girls, it's still having a Monster Girl like a Drulon would be excellent to have as a friend. Or if you girls like a Drulon and you have a boyfriend, a, head, a headless boyfriend, of guys have a headless girlfriend, who am I to say? But still, I don't know if it just works, but if you have sex with Drulon, where does the head go? Like, you put the head over there and have sex with the body, don't you think that's kind of weird? Is that kind of weird? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe it's weird. Maybe. But that's it. <laughs> anyway, episode two was great. And I loved it. And I'm sure y'all excited for this review as much as I am. And tune in next week for episode three of Interview with Monster Girls.